When buying an electric vehicle, you're likely to have many, many questions. And that's understandable because they've just recently been introduced to our region. Today, we have with us Mustafa from Chevrolet's technical team, who will be keeping facts aside from the fiction and answering questions that you've asked us. So, Mustafa, first of all, thank you for taking the time to yeah, talk with us. Thanks for your time. We're driving the Chevrolet Bolt today. And uh, lots of our viewers and readers have been asking us questions about electric vehicles. I think you're the perfect person to answer them. Thank you so much. So let's start. This is the first question I'm sure you've answered many, many times. And it's related to the charging times of the Chevrolet Bolt. Okay. So what sort of options are there to charge the Chevrolet Bolt and how long do they take? So basically we have uh, three types of charging. Mm -hmm. the, the first and the most fastest one. Uh, is the DC charging? You can get the 30. Uh, you can get 150 kilometers in 30 minutes of a charge, which is basically the time that you can have a cup of coffee in, your, in a fuel station on the road if you if you want to top, top up your battery. Yes. The DC charge will give you 80% uh, uh, of your battery charge will be in 80 minutes. Okay. And a fully charge from zero to 100 in uh, in around two hours and a half. But obviously. DC charge is made, like is made for uh, if you have if you're going from a, for a road trip or on a very long drive, so you need to top up your battery. You don't need to stay the full uh, two hours and a half. Right. So DC charging is the fastest one. DC and charging uh, charging is the fastest one, which is actually bypassing the onboard charging module in the vehicle and directly charge the battery in uh, in in at 50 kilowatt speed per hour. per hour and is it possible for people to install these dc chargers at home no no, no. dc chargers Not yet. needs uh, industrial license okay and uh, it will like you need a lot of approval and uh, speci special types of connection right. the second option which is available for home usage is the wall box yeah so you can get a wall box which will charge your vehicle in uh, nine nine point uh, nine point uh, thirty minutes. Okay. Uh, so overnight, basically, you will be able to get your car fully charged. Again, the charging process for an electric vehicle is not uh, a standard zero to hundred charging type of process. Yeah. It's more of top up. So we know that there is not a lot of infrastructure. So whenever we always recommend people, whenever you get a chance to top up your vehicle and you have a source for that, it's better to do it in order to be ready at your next uh, move. The, the, the slowest one, which is a kind of emergency charger, will, uh, the benefit of it, it, it doesn't need any kind of installation. So if you're traveling, if you're sleeping over in a place that doesn't have your uh, special setup or the wall box or a DC charge, you can actually connect the emergency charger on a wall socket, yes. and this will charge your vehicle uh, at a lower speed. But at least this will, will, will get will get you moved. And how long would so does you're talking about like a, a regular sort of port outlet that like, you have in your house? Yeah, like like the the laptop charger, for example. Okay, and if someone was to use that at home, how long would it take to charge? Around the, thirty hours. Thirty hours, but that's a full charge. Yeah, okay. that's fully charged. Right. Okay. The second question is also related to the batteries. So, I mean, what's the sort of warranty period? Because a big concern that people have is like, yeah, but how often will I have to keep changing the batteries? Because, you know, my phone, every one and a half years, the battery gets out and then... So how yeah, actually, actually the the battery, battery phone battery is not a very good example because it's very small yeah. and uh, it designed to be heavy. Uh, there is no cooling system for it. Right. The batteries in, a, in an electric vehicle is much more advanced. Oh. They, there is a lot of uh, cooling system. We actually use one of the best available in the market, which is the active cooling system, mm -hmm. uh, using uh, liquid cooling okay. to to maintain the battery temperature in optimal uh, degree. This actually allow you to charge faster and it preserves the battery life on the long term. So this is why we are very confident about our product and we support it by 160,000 kilometers or eight years, whichever comes first as wow. a warranty. Okay. So okay. this is a warranty for the battery and all the electrical components, including the motor yeah. and the uh, uh, transmission system, which is not a traditional gearbox. It's a Correct. transmission system, but not a gearbox. Okay. 
and I mean let's say if there was an issue with the battery is it possible to change just the part of it or you have to replace the whole battery yeah this is a very good question we we the battery how how the battery is designed mm -hmm. we are not in the business of manufacturing batteries however we do design our battery and LG chemical they manufacture it for us right uh, it's a, it, it has sections and modules yeah. which is basically allowing you to if you have uh, an issue with a certain uh, part of the battery, a specific section or a specific module, that you can change it. And this is how uh, we try to manage or to avoid changing the whole battery uh, at once. Because not, it's not efficient, right? Not and the, the, the whole uh, idea of electric vehicle is trying to be practical and efficient. Okay. You've driven a fair number of electric cars and you obviously work with them very closely. So what would be, in your opinion, uh, your sort of advice if someone's looking to buy a used EV? Uh, my, my number one advice for anyone who wants a used vehicle, whether it's electric or internal combustion engine, is to get uh, a, a vehicle with a local specs yeah. uh, in order to be covered with the local dealer or the manufacturer warranty within your region. So we have actually our uh, Chevrolet Complete Care uh, plan, which is basically uh, covering the warranty across the GCC. There is no issue if you have a vehicle at a good price or a good condition from UAE uh, in your, here in Oman, for example, you can purchase it. Or if you are an expat and you're living in Oman, for example, and for any reason you move to another country, you can take your vehicle. This is how we designed this package to provide peace of mind for our customers. Yeah. But I'm telling everyone is to stay away from gray importation or trying to get a, a vehicle from a market that doesn't have the local GCC specs. Specs. Because this will create a lot of issues when it comes to warranty, cost of ownership, and maintenance and spare parts. When it comes to electric vehicles, there is a unique part of the electricity difference. So the US, for example, they have 110 volts, yes. and we have 220, 240 across the region. It depends on each country. So this is why we are a bit we we, we have differences. So I don't recommend. Also, the 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 charging type mm -hmm. is different. So you US, for example, our vehicle in US, they use CC type 1 yeah. uh, charger and we use CCS type 2 so this is the kind of difference that we are trying to highlight for people because this this might be very unique to electric vehicle not like the internal combustion engine but in general I recommend everyone to stick the, to, to the local specification yeah. and a vehicle under the local warranty okay and I mean are there certain things that you can check before you want to buy a used EV I mean how can you tell if the battery is in good condition and uh, this should be available if you have your vehicle covered under a local warranty. Yeah. This should be uh, available as a part of the regular checkup, the, the reports for maintenance report. If you have uh, service history, yeah. this should be easy for you. Okay, okay, fine. All right, and uh, finally, what would you say is your favorite feature of electric vehicles? Uh, regional braking. This is, yeah. <laughs> It's a very smart uh, solution, yeah. uh, and the idea of one pedal driving is very, very, very convenient yes. when it comes to driving within the city or uh, with a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. So the, it's a peace of mind that you use one uh, one leg only to accelerate, and once you take it off from the accelerator, the vehicle starts to accelerate automatically. Yeah. It's uh, it's a very fun to drive. Actually, the experience of the the acceleration everything about ele electric vehicle for people who didn't get a chance to try electric vehicle is not at as you Cause some people they think that the uh, electric vehicle is is not power uh, powerful enough the, it's not getting the enough acceleration yeah. so actually bolt is 204 horsepower yes. 360 newton meter of torque and you get the torque from zero yeah. so don't there is no we saw that yeah. we saw that under the drag uh, and the that night we, when we were doing the drag race, yeah, I mean, exactly, the bolt yeah. was just wheel spin the, from yeah. the beginning. And the acceleration, like you don't need from a city car acceleration more than 0 to 100 in, in, in 7 seconds. This is pretty much good for, for everything that you need to do in your daily life. Correct. Alright, well, thanks a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thanks for your time.